So this is a truck I sold a few years back, and today we got to fix somebody else's mistakes. We got a hack windshield install. Told you guys I see this a lot. They probably didn't use any primer when they put the windshield glass back in, and it started rusting. It's starting to leak, and there's a dent over there. So we're gonna fix the dent, fix the rust, and get a new windshield. Hopefully I won't have to put any patch panels in here, but we'll find out when we get the glass out. So let's do that. So we'll remove our I-Pass, the method for which Illinois uses to overcharge us for driving on their pothole filled roads. We'll unscrew the rearview mirror and unplug it. Pull off the antenna for the remote starter that hasn't worked in I don't know, probably as long as this windshield's been leaking. Now you can pull the A-pillar trim off. Pull the door gasket out. That reveals the screws inside, so we just unscrew them. If you could open the doors all the way, you could use a screwdriver on all of them, but I was doing this in a little cubby hole. So do the same thing on the passenger side. Pull that gasket out of there. Don't scratch the roof. Take our screws out. And pull our trim off. Now we're ready to cut the windshield out. Top cut's pretty easy. Barely any of it is actually attached to anything anymore. I seem to go a little crazy on the sides. Doubled up the urethane. Makes my life a little more difficult. Oops, broke the windshield. Get that bottom edge. Now we do the bottom. Let's use a windshield knife. Push up a little bit as you slice it, and it'll come right out. Row, row, row your knife aggressively through the urethane. I went with gloves. My hands are impervious to metal, but glass seems to cut them up. Missed that corner. We'll get it. Just tear it off. Now I'll remove the rest of the molding. A little urethane. And here's what we're dealing with. So we're going to have to grind it out to see how bad it really is and what will be required to repair it. So put a blanket over the dash. I'm kind of sitting on the dashboard. I'm just going to grind everything off. See if we can find any holes in there. See just how far it goes underneath the paint. A 
couple rock chips. We'll get those while we're here. I hate rust. I don't normally do rust repair. But when your family buys 10 cars from me, I can't say no. So other than some deep pits, we got to the bottom of our rust. There are no holes, so we're gonna hand it over to the body guy, let him sandblast it, put some body filler on it, prime it, and we're ready to paint it. Everything looks good. It's all primed up, body work's all done, that dent's taken care of. If you notice in the video, this part here isn't smooth, that's because there's no body filler. I see a lot of people put body filler under where the urethane goes, and that's no good. Body filler does not have the same shear strength as urethane and properly adhered paint and primers. Since windows are actually a structural part of a vehicle, putting filler underneath urethane weakens the vehicle itself. You have to leave whatever is there and paint it and put your primer on for your urethane and the urethane itself will fill in all the imperfections or unevenness in the metal. So Bonda goes here, not here. This public service announcement has been brought to you by Vicor. So now, in order for them to paint it, we gotta prep it. We're gonna have to take this cap off. Actually, we're just gonna slide it back about, well, as long as those wires are. 18 inches. Just enough so we can get some paint on the back of that roof. We're gonna put a clamp back on there so that that cap doesn't fall off. I'll pull the third brake light out. The front of the cap covers up the back of the roof here. That's why we had to slide it back. Pull the J-nuts off for the tail light. So now it's all painted. So that's what it looks like. Now you start putting it back together. Yeah, I missed. Would you expect anything less? Put our J-nuts back on. Plug in our third brake light. Slide it in. I would check to see if it works, but I don't care, because it's useless. Once the cap is there, you can't see it, and the cargo lights are useless as well. Pull our safety clamp back off of here. We'll slide our cap all the way back up. Tuck our little seal in there that came out. Close the gate so we can line everything up. Now you can clamp it all down.
I clamped the other side, but I know. If it's not on video, it didn't happen. You'll have to trust me. So now we're going to put our weather stripping on. Top just slides in. And then snaps on. The rest will go on when the windshield molding's on. Glass company will install that. I'll do the driver's side. And now we're going to see what the aftermath of that windshield leak actually was. Carpet's a little wet, so we're going to take it out, dry it out. We'll unbolt the seats. Okay, we're going to try and unbolt the seats. Snap on. Harbor Freight. Good old fashioned manpower. Moral of the story doesn't matter how much you spend on your cordless tools. They all suck. I can pull the seat out. I'm gonna do the same thing on the driver's side. Floor mat. Sill plate. Kick panel. Unbolt the front of the seat. We'll try our luck in the back. Yeah, this side worked out. Pull our driver's seat out. Our console out, center seat, whatever you want to call it, it's both. Now we're going to pull our rear seats out, pull the side trim off, unbolt them. Take the jack out. I'll do the driver's side. Now we're going to throw our seats in the back. And pull our jack bracket out. And our lug wrench and spare tire tools. I know, that's not how the wheel chocks go. That's how I found them, that's how I'm gonna put them back. So now we can pull our carpeting out. Pull our wiring off so we can get our padding out. Put 
padding out and we'll dry it out. And here's what happens when you have water sitting in there for a long time. It's pretty much rotted this floor out and I don't do rust. And the only way to really fix all this is to replace most of the rocker and the floor section. So all I'm doing is buying them a little time. I'm not getting into all that. So we'll grind it all down, take the caulk out. Mask it off. We went all out using paper this time instead of a piece of cardboard. I'll spray some rust converter on there. Supposedly it neutralizes the rust. I don't know. Some kind of witchcraft. We'll spray it on there and hope for the best. I'll top coat it. I'll put this trim panel on. We got a new one. The other one was rotted away. It holds the wires and it also holds the sill plate. Now we're going to have to put a door handle on. Apparently these door handles are not rated for three-year-olds to hang on. So we need to replace it. Pull the screws out of the door panel. And lift up. Dear GM, please bring back lift off door panels. It's so much easier. In the pile. So now on both the three bolts on the inside of the door handle. Pull what's left of it out and put a new one in. Start our three nuts on there. I'm using a ratcheting wrench to get to them. If you take the window regulator out, you can get to all of them with a ratchet, but it's more work. So you just kind of work around it. Ends up being easier in the long run. Clip our actuator rod back in there. Put our water barrier back up. Make sure it's sealed nice and tight. I don't want water getting inside this truck. Slide our door panel down. Put our two bolts back in. Put our handle cover back on. Little door lock switch. Now that our primer's dry, we can throw some seam sealer on. And now that that's dry, we can throw our padding back in. Put our air ducts in. Okay, clean freaks. Here's your 16 seconds of pure joy. For everyone else, it's just some guy vacuuming a carpet. So now I'm gonna throw our carpeting in. Run our duct work. Probably forget to run the wires, so we gotta dig them out later. Throw our sill plates on. Put our jack bracket in. Put our wheel chalk in there. Our jack tools and lug wrench. That's how I found it, guys. 
Don't tell me it's wrong. Now throw our seed in there. Throw our other seed in there. Bolt them down. These older crew cab seats are really awkward and annoying. I hope I never have to take them out again. Put our jack in there and a the bracket. And screw it to extend it and hold it into place. Now up in the front, this is the bracket for the bottom of the dashboard. cover back on. Then we throw our console slash middle seat back in the truck. Throw our seats in, bolt them down. Put our kick panel on the passenger side and our sill plate. Put our seat covers on. Kick panel and sill plate on the driver's side. There you go. Glass guys came and installed the glass. Good as new. Look at all that dirt. Ah, oh, clean freaks are going crazy. I got you guys. I cleaned it. I wouldn't let it go like that. So it's raining here, again, but on a plus side, it's nice and dry in the truck, windshield's not leaking, so it isn't all bad. Now I said I rebuilt this truck, I put a frame, a fender, and right front suspension on it. If you want to watch the video, it's up there. I do have to warn you, it's pretty bad. It was only a second video I uploaded to YouTube, so if you think my videos suck now, you're really not going to like that one. But if you're really bored, give it a look. So like this video if you found it interesting, share it if you think somebody else might, subscribe to see more of whatever I'm building. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.